All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show with Lauren from Love and Chew. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. For people who don't know, what does your company do? Yeah, so we bake uh, protein cookies, mostly targeted towards women, but also men. Super clean ingredients. I love ingredients. them. So that's a, you, have, you have a male supporter here. <laughs> yeah, super clean ingredients. Um, all of our cookies have dates, chia seeds, almonds, all locally sourced. Um, and we just keep it really clean and simple. What made you want to start the company? And so I'm always, yeah. I'm a big cookie fan. I'm always yeah. trying to find the healthiest cookie. It feels like an oxymoron to even say that. But what made you want to start this company, this product? Yeah, so I went vegan about seven years ago, and I've always just been a huge baker. And, you know, vegan baking is a little bit different, right? Because you have to find replacements for like butter and eggs. And so when I was experimenting in my kitchen, I really landed on the chia egg. And for those the of chia you. The chia egg. Yes, the chia egg. So for those of you that don't know, it's basically chia seeds plus water, and you let it sit for a bit and it becomes very gelatinous, and it can hold baked goods together and replace an egg, which is kind of amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so, so you found your egg replacement. Yes. And then they were delicious. Yes. Is the assumption. Yes. Great, and so you solved the problem for your, for your home. Yes. And at what point are you like, let me go ahead and try something crazy and start a CPG company? What made you want to take that leap? Yeah, so I'm an accidental entrepreneur, so I was working in tech at the time, like I was an early stage um, employee at a tech startup and everything was going great. So I wasn't necessarily looking to start a company at the time, but you know, my friends and my family kept telling me like, these vegan cookies are delicious. Like, why don't you just try selling them to local grocery stores in San Francisco? Okay. Yeah. And so I went to like Buy Right and Rainbow Grocery and yeah. other local grocery stores. Molly was, Stoned, right? Yes. Molly, yeah, that's another Molly one. Molly Stoned, yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and literally like, you know, showed up with my cookies in like a freaking Ziploc bag. And, you know, the buyers were like, this is great, but you need packaging. And so I was actually baking in my home kitchen initially um, when I first started. And so. what was your first account that you landed? It was Rainbow Grocery. It's in the mission. <laughs> and when you got it, was it a side hustle? Or at this point, are you like, this could really be something? Or how are you thinking about it mentally at the time? You know, I just thought about it as a side hustle because I had about... 15 grocery accounts and CPG like I think what's surprising to consumers is like you're not moving that much volume right like the stores are selling whatever four cookies a flavor per week and so that's not really like moving the needle revenue wise and so I had a good friend um, who was working at LinkedIn at the time and he said these cookies would be great in um, our corporate pantries and cafeterias oh yeah that's a huge so, account yes and you landed that I did yes oh my god and so at that point how many are they buying then like 3,000 at a week or something, 3,000 a month maybe? It was more. It was, I kind of fell over when I got the PO. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was baking in my home, in my apartment in San Francisco, and it was about two pallets worth or roughly 16,000 cookies. Per month? Uh, yeah, it was about per month, yeah. 16,000 cookies. Yes. <laughs> no wonder LinkedIn's doing so well. You yeah. fed them. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And so at that point, you're like, all right, this is more than a side hustle. I probably need a kitchen or something. Yes. I need, I need to do something. So I went to go look for a co-manufacturer okay. at that point to okay. fill this PO. Yeah, so. that makes sense. Yeah. And at this time, you're just you're just bootstrapping it. I am, okay. yes. And you're still working. I'm still working. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and now you're trying to find a co-manufacturer. Yes. And you find one? Yeah, but there's more to the story. It wasn't that easy because I, you know, I called a bunch and they're kind of like not taking me seriously, kind of like, you're cute. That's nice. <laughs> Not really giving me the time of day. So I actually physically <laughs> got into my car, drove two hours and showed up at my co-man. I still work with them today okay. and said, look, <laughs> here's my PO. Here's my PO. <laughs> Will you please take my business? Can we figure this out? And they said, fine. <laughs> okay. And you had yeah. the funds to be able to front that yourself. I did at okay. the time. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then things at LinkedIn go well, I assume. Yes, it did. And then we were able to launch in Uber, uh, Airbnb. Eventually, we got into Google's campuses. Wow. And then at that point, I was kind of like, OK, this might make sense as a full time thing for me. So maybe I should try to pursue it. So you're doing like 50,000 cookies or more yes. on a monthly basis. Yeah. Still side hustle. It was still a side hustle because it's it's very it's very different from retail. So it's. It's either direct or through, they have a specialized distributor, yeah. no chargebacks, very clean. Like one person can actually manage it. It's a clean channel. That's amazing. So, so you're not yeah. dealing with too much. Yeah. So they're sort of like the ideal client. 
And so yeah. at this point you're thinking to yourself, okay, so I have all these clients who are easy to work with. Yes. Maybe I go to every campus in America, but there's not that many I imagine. So it doesn't scale. And at what exactly. point does your mindset go? We should go CPG route. Let me go into retailers, grocers. Well, okay. So what 2020 happened. Okay. So my so food service business went to zero, literally. That's right. All, okay. All the offices yes. shut down. Yep. Yes. I had like it was a whole thing. I had like 14 pallets stranded all over the place. Uh, San Francisco com was early in shutting down. I don't know if you guys remember that, but anyway, so it California was like, in general, but California yeah, in San general, Francisco, but yes, I think LA. San Francisco was one of the, the first cities to shut down during COVID. <laughs> and so my pallets were stranded, didn't like no one knew what to do and revenue went to zero. And I was just kind of like, okay, I've quit my nice tech job for this. Like, what do I do? <laughs> so what'd you do? I actually decided to pivot into retail. Okay. So I thought about quitting, but then I decided to pivot into retail. Which at the time is probably looking daunting because I'm sure everyone in America is like, are they going to shut down the grocery stores also? Yes. At the time, right? Yes. Obviously that didn't go that way. And then the grocery became like the money maker. And so when, when you did the pivot, did you decide to raise capital or are you still bootstrapping it on your own? I was still bootstrapping it. So I had applied to Whole Foods Market one region test in Northern California the okay. year prior. Okay. So I was thinking about retail, you know, For when I was doing food service, you know, it was just 40 stores. Yeah. And like probably, I don't know, like June of 2020, that's when I got the acceptance okay. into the 40 stores. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's not, it so wasn't. pretty good timing. Lot. It was great timing, but it wasn't a lot of stores and it wasn't a lot of capital to fund that production run for Whole Foods. Sure. Yeah. But still a big win. At it was the time. a big win. Yes. That's a massive. Yeah. And so then you do that. Yes. And then you're like, hopefully these sell, but it's hard because you can't do in-store demos because it's COVID, right? Yes. Which it was is, very challenging. <laughs> so how did you get through your pro? Like, what did you do during that time besides yeah. go crazy? We did a lot of influencer marketing. We ended up doing a lot of couponing as well. And that moved the needle. And then eventually demos turned back on and that helped. And then also TPR. So like sales on shelf helped a lot too. Yeah. And did you see the velocities? Were they maybe faster than you would have thought in the store? Or what were you seeing that was maybe surprising or nothing at all? Honestly, our, when we first launched, our velocities weren't great. I think a lot of folks in CPG, when they're new, they think, okay, I just need to get on the shelf and mm, it'll no. sell. That's when everything <laughs> starts. <laughs> and I, maybe I thought that too at the time. And then I was like, okay, we need to you know, support this account and do some marketing. Um, and the thing about Whole Foods Market is they actually provide all of the sales data for free on a weekly basis. So you can actually track your marketing campaigns. You can see your velocities yeah. in real time. Yeah. What do you think when people looked at it? Like, what is their first reaction to this product? Just in general? Yeah. Like, what was the thing that yeah. maybe you were you were realizing, okay, so in your head, you wanted to create this, yeah. this one thing, but then yeah. the, what the consumer sort of the reason they make the purchase is always something very different. Yes. Or not, you know, yes. because the marketing is your new company. And so there's still a lot of education that has to happen. Yes. What were you seeing there? So having packaging for food service is very different from having packaging that goes into retail. Yep. And so that was a learning curve for me as well. So prior to 2020, like we were called Complete Eats um, instead of Love and Shoe. It was hard to understand, hard to spell. People thought we were a meal prep company. We also had very like pastel packaging. In general, our packaging was hard to read, but this didn't come up, right? Because we're being given out as a free snack in corporate tech pantries. So no one gave us this feedback. But then when we launched into Whole Foods Market, we quickly realized that we needed to change our packaging, make it brighter. Also, we call out the protein. So we have seven to 10 grams of protein per two ounce cookie. Um, and that's just been a big, certain call outs, I think, have really attracted customers to our products. Yeah. So that's what it got me, by yeah. the way. Because yeah. <laughs> I play a lot of tennis, and so I'm always oh, looking okay. for a, a way to like put more protein in my body. Yeah. And obviously, if you put it in a cookie, of course, that's the best way to get everything. protein, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. And so then at Whole Foods, at what point do you feel like we really have something here? So you're in 2020, you're in 40 stores. What happens at, like, yeah. what, what 2021, 22, what, what happens when you're like, we have something? Yeah. So I, I was working on getting the velocities up. Up. Then we got interest from Sprouts and okay. Sprouts said, we want to do a national rollout. They said, and, wow, yeah. they said national from yes, the jump, from the jump. They had no innovation shelf. They just wanted to go national. And I said, oh, and we're taking four SKUs. And I said, okay. <laughs> and how many SKUs did you have at the time? I think I only had four. Okay. Yeah. So they, they so, wanted all of them. Yeah. And so, so now you're yeah. in the same, same command or no? Same co-man, but then we eventually expanded and got um, two others in Texas. You had to. 
We had to, yeah. What was that like? Are you still bootstrapping at that time? Yes, still bootstrapping. Eventually the food service business came back. We started focusing more on Amazon. So for me, A it's D2C like- A D2C channel. Yes, wow. D2C and Amazon. Yeah. But like for me, it's, it's kind of that balance. So we're still only in about like 1500 doors. Yeah. Retail, it's very hard to make money as I'm sure a lot of people have told you in yes, CPG. Yes, it's tough. And so I've been balancing out the channels and we have highly profitable channels that honestly help pay for other aspects of the business. And that's your D2C channel and your food service channels? Yeah, and then we okay. eventually got a line of credit, um, mm -hmm. so that helps as well. So you don't need funding? Yeah. Or you haven't had to get some funding? I think eventually we will raise though. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're there. <laughs> I think we will though. 1,500 yeah. stores, your D2C yeah. channel, okay. How many yeah. food service contracts are you in now? Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> nationwide? Yeah, we're nationwide um, in one of the largest food service distributors now. So okay. They're called Vistar. And when people want the product, what is it that they're seeing? Like, what are you what are you learning from the buyers on the grocery side that they're like, this is, this is a real need? Is it the protein? Is it the cookie? What's the thing that is resonating with them? Yeah, so we're merchandised in the nutrition bar aisle. So okay. we're just... Like you go, what, like there, I was in the Whole Foods down the street, right? Yeah, on Santa yeah. Monica Boulevard. And you go in there and there's like a bazillion, there's like just a bazillion different bars. It's true. Right? There are. And it's just like, they all kind of look <laughs> the same. They're in the same packaging. And so like we're, we offer something that's different. Are you like, in that aisle? We are. Okay. So you're in yes. the same aisle. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. we're a cookie format. Our packaging and our shape and our size just looks different. That's the bigger one? Yeah. It's the bigger one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And buyers love that and then buyers love how clean our ingredients are that's why our customers keep coming back and then the protein content and you know you look on the back of the label and you understand every single ingredient it's yeah. easy what's it's the hard easy. part was it hard to get it shelf stable yes. at the beginning we yeah. still don't have a long shelf life what's the shelf life six on it? months from baking okay yeah that's still pretty good it's i mean good. i get i hear you i hear you it's good what was the hard part yeah what was the hard part in terms of getting it shelf stable yeah the hard part is the dates the dates. Yes. Okay. So dates have high water activity. So that's something. So our kill step is the baking, right? Because we're a natural products. We don't like add any preservatives or anything like that. And so managing the water activity after each production run. And if you're above a certain threshold, like we'll throw out the batch because we're concerned about, you know, issues with that. So. But you come and help that. They figured it out. Yes. We, we also had to hire like an outside consultant to help sure, with this yeah, too. It's hard so. to do. I was an investor in an almond milk company at the beginning and that was their whole, that was a huge challenge for them was the shelf, like the gums essentially. Yes. And then, and so their shelf life was seven days upon oh, refrigerating, wow, that's which, nothing. which is super tough. And yeah. so they went into, first they went into coffee shops, which is great because yeah. coffee shops have that volume. The home consumer, a mm, little tougher. Yeah. That's quick even for, yeah, for retail. And then they powderized everything. They found a way to do it. Oh, wow. And now they just add water, which is really interesting. Is that Joy? No, it's called Good Milk. Oh, yes. And they're, yes. Uh, they're nationwide with, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're nationwide with Blue Bottle, yes. which is great. We share a fractional CFO, actually. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, small world. Got it. You want to yes. give your fractional CFO a plug? <laughs> if anyone's looking? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if he's looking for new clients, actually, <laughs> but he's great. <laughs> so where do you want to take the business as you move forward? Like, it's a very yeah. different animal today. It is. What do you want to do with it? Or how big do you want to take this thing? So I'm really focused on scaling existing channels. So our main retail partners are Costco, Whole Foods Market, and Sprouts. And so continuing to increase SKU count, increase velocities. Um, we're about to do a road show and a rotation in the Bay Area next week. We just delivered, so that's exciting. And then hopefully expand through other regions, maybe become an everyday item. Yeah. And then same with food service. So we're very strong on the West Coast and I think there's a lot of opportunity on the East Coast. We're looking at getting into like micro markets and vending as another channel. There's a lot of lot like non-grocery channels that I think could work really well with our products. Like for example, like airlines and airports and gyms and you know, even coffee shops. Um, so that's really what I'm focused on, but existing distribution. <laughs> and do, you, do you need to raise to do that or can you just get debt? Debt. How are you thinking about this? Pure debt. Yeah. I have a lot of credit and yeah. it works pretty well. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah. Any desire to go on Shark Tank? I would like to go on Shark Tank. Yes. You would? Yes. Nice. Doesn't everyone want to go on Shark Tank? I think so. <laughs> I, th I think it's great. Yeah. I mean the hype and the, I think the, yeah. the thing I learned about it the most was we've obviously interviewed like 50 companies that have been on Shark Tank. Yeah. And in that, I've just learned it. it's the best way to educate a market. 
you it's know, the best way. I think they provide value as investors too. And, yeah, I would the questions you get, totally. Yeah. So you would, you'd give up a piece of the... For them, yes. Of the superfood cookie. Yes, for them, <laughs> yes. As long as it's a deal that, you know... Obviously, yeah. ...is mutually beneficial. <laughs> That's the hard part with the sharks. They're yes. very greedy. Where do you want the company to go in 2024? And so this year, even next year. So you have a yeah. bar. So how many SKUs do you have now? So we have seven flavors um, and then... I mean, there's just different ways that we do it. So like we have a Costco specific SKU and then we have multiple sizes. So we have the two ounce and the one ounce. Okay. So SKU total, like we have about 20, which is a lot. Okay. What's so, your favorite? You know, you're not supposed to pick your favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you my favorite. My favorite's this one. Yeah. It's, that's the, our banana, top, it's yeah. the banana bread. Yeah. That's our top seller. <laughs> is it? Yes. Okay. So it's your favorite too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like, we make, here it is, the pumpkin it's, oh, this we one. do a seasonal that's really good. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, where can people buy the product? Where can they support? Yeah. So we're in Whole Foods Market. We're in about half the country in Whole Foods Market. So like west towards Texas. And then hopefully later in the year, we have a big announcement coming up regarding that. We're national in Sprouts, but we're in the superfoods aisle, not the nutrition bar aisle. Merchandising is, you know, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> depends on the store. And then we'll be in Costco's, all the Costco's in the Bay Area starting next week. That's huge. Yeah. That's a hard account to land. Yeah. They're wonderful to work with. And then maybe Irwan? Yes. And we just launched Irwan. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yes. That's a good local staple. Yes. And Gelson's as well. Amazing. So, well, thanks yeah. for coming on the pod. I yes, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Superfood cookie. Thank yes. you. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.